Welcome back, baseball fans, to the 1971-74 elimination video. And we are going to eliminate the Colorado Rockies. They um, finished really hopeless against the Astros. They lost two straight by getting shut out twice, 3 nothing and 9 nothing. Very weak way to finish their season. They, if you're wondering, weren't a very good team. And uh, last year they were 19 and 20. This year 16 and 23. Average fell. The RA rose. Um, just not a lot to hang your hat on. We got to start with the offense. This is a team put together, designed for homers, walks. They can tolerate the strikeouts. Just don't hit the double plays. One of the weird things I see on here is the stolen base column that Don Money stole six bases. Thanks, Don, but you, I hope you weren't thrown out because that's just shortening an inning for this team that doesn't like to do things like that. Um, no 300 hitters, but the on-base percentages should be higher than the batting average because of all the walks by a considerable margin. Uh, 230 with a 306 on-base is not going to cut it. You want to be 70, 80 points better, I get it. You want at least a 360 on-base for a team that's put together this manner, and it just didn't work out. I don't see anybody in double digits of home runs. The strikeouts are certainly there. Particularly Andy Costco's futile year. He had eight homers to lead the club. An astonishing five walks and 45 strikeouts. That's what happens when you take a uh, fringe extra platoon player and you make him play every day. It can turn out bad, and it turned out bad this year for Colorado. Um... Rick Auerbach's card is a 340 card. He hits 286 with it. Kingman 278. Every hitter underachieved. Money. Rick Monday. There's nothing there. Um, if all the offense is failing, I doubt seriously that your pitching is going to bail you out. But let's give you a, a, a silver lining here. So Jim Schellenbach, that fantastically named reliever. You know, folks, he had an ERA around one a year ago, and look at it again this year. 138 ERA, two years in a row for Jim Schellenbach. I take everything back, Jim. You've been outstanding for a terrible team with a 138 ERA. Ron Klimkowski required in the offseason. He had a nice year. Mel Queen, the closer, went to the All-Star game. So don't bang on the bullpen here. Look at the innings pitched. And I might want to add that right now this team is leading in the clubhouse, as I like to say, um, watching the TV, see what else happens, for the Commissioner Award, the award given for roster utilization. That's where you take the lowest amounts of innings pitch times at bats, and the team with the highest number gets a compensatory pick in the draft next year, the 33rd pick in the draft. You basically trade your eighth round pick for arguably the first round pick in the second round, or the first pick in the second round. So. And right now, Colorado could get that pick, and that, that would certainly help a team like this. Dick Drago had a really terrible year. John Cumberland, a guy, a lefty we really like, he had a bad year. Yeah, it's, I don't know what to say. I don't want to bag on this team anymore. They're an expansion team, and it, these expansion teams are experimental. Let's take a look now at the cards of the Colorado Rockies. That Yeah, these are, you know, we're seeing that... Um, in this timeline, when there's only 24 traditional Major League teams, building an expansion roster has been pretty difficult because, look, Johnny Bench is not going to play for anybody but the Reds, Willie Stargell on the Pirates, Henry Aaron on the Braves, Brooks Robinson on the Orioles. You get the idea. The stacked traditional Major League teams are going to stay stacked, and it's hard for these expansion teams to get, well, almost impossible to get a Hall of Famer but it's also difficult to get any All-Stars. And so you have to hang your hat on finding ex, uh, extra player cards with limited at-bats or innings pitch that played to, you know, statistical anomalies and tore it up, AKA like 77 Roger Freed with a 398 card. You know, that's what these expansion teams need. So this should be 871s that we want to put away. And these are your 12 returning Rockies for, for next year. 
and they look like they're going to go with a 7-5 split which is the balance you would want so that you don't have a you're not looking for too much hitting or pitching in the draft and here we go with these uh, Sunday beer league softball hitters and we got a bunch uh, let's see again you're going to end up with too many DH corner outfield first base types on a squad like this Oh, uh, boy. <laughs> I'm just trying to get some semblance of order here. Okay, so what I'm looking at... You know, Crowley... This is a nice Terry Crowley card for a guy who was mostly known as a pinch hitter. But that's a nice on base card and a homer card. It's a good Rocky card. With Joe Liss, another good Rocky card. You just got to produce. They haven't been. Here's Don Money. One, a third base. They don't really need that, but they have it. And a B Steeler. They don't need that either. And an A bunner and a B hit and runner. They don't need that either, but they have it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a full season of Don Money, who was a brewer. And they love this guy, and he's going to play his whole tenure here with the Rockies because he's, like, one of the foundational players. Here's that Arabach card. We mentioned it. 342. See that? You need a bunch of these guys, not just one. Let this dude play every day, make a ton of errors, and get on base and help this team, you know. Here's Rick Monday. He had a terrible year, but that's a heck of a nice card. 26 bombs for the Cubbies in 73. Really hits right as well. Great defense still. Drew LaHood looks like that Terry Crowley card. This is with Boston, I think. No, the Brewers. 12 home runs, half a season. You know, typical Rocky. And here's Andy Costco. So this is what happened. You notice there's no walks over here. So that's the problem. He hardly... He never hit this at all, or maybe once or twice, if that. But he hit this a ton, folks. And he struck out a whole bunch this year, and it really hurt his team. He's coming back. And now the five pitchers. Well, here's our guy, man. This is the card that's done it. The 1972 Texas Ranger Jim Schellenbach card has pitched out of his mind the last two years. Well, maybe next year you can go three for three, because your team's certainly going to need you. Put you in the bullpen there. Reed and Drago in the rotation. So Reed and Drago can go on three days rest. Fitzmaurice can pitch on four days rest. You can slide Merritt as a lefty in the rotation, or you can put him in the bullpen. He's not particularly great either way. And shell him back. At least they have two lefties there. So it's a decent split. Seven hitters and five pitchers. So they're not really short any particular you know, area. I didn't see a catcher there and and maybe one more lefty uh, left-handed pitcher but otherwise it's it's just not that you know it's just not that big a deal for the Rockies right now to go into the offseason and build back build back this team so let's take a look at what the Colorado Rockies do with those eight players from 71 do they keep them wave them retire them or trade them Okay, let's take a look at what these Colorado Rockies are going to do with their eight guys that are missing. First one is Jack Hyatt, one of the two catchers they had. Good guy for on base percentage for this Rocky team, which is why they went out and got him. Had a bunch of fine years, you know, for the Giants, and then he bounced around after that. And uh, he's going to wrap his, up his career in 72. But you see, 69, look at the uh, gain of on base for batting average. You know, he's 156 points better. And then here, you, you see he's 120 points. And then you see it keeps on going. He's, he's got a huge gap of on base. The 71 card, we have to put away. He has one more year left in his career. He splits it with the Astros and the Angels. Total numbers look pretty good. Again, a 350 on base, 257 hitting catcher. However, does this card exist? We have to go look and see if his Houston or California card exists in the 72 set. We're going to go to Gary's roster page, pull up the, um, the 72 rosters, original first edition, and I'm going to look and see if Houston and California have um, Mr. Hyatt. Start with the Angels. And no Jack Hyatt there. One more crack, and we're going to have to say goodbye to him. Edwards and Howard. And we look at the Houston extra guys. No more Jack Hyatt. So sadly, he had, he did a nice enough performance to get him 
draftable, but Stratomatic does not print the card. I don't, I retire him. I don't go with one of those nameless cards. So no more Jack Hyatt his career. We'll have to go into retirement. Next player, Phil Gagliano. Filled it in field spot. Was a Red Sox, maybe a Red. I think he's got at least one more good year left from 63 to 74. He's got a Cardinal hat here. Phil, yeah, he would have been in the 67 and 8 series there, utility guy. And here we are with Boston and Cincinnati. So we had this 324 card. And it didn't hit any home runs, which is not what Colorado wants, but it has a ton of on base. That card is gone. However, there's a 290 card coming up in 73. That card exists. I'm making this guy a keeper because I want that 290 card. Uh, does he get waivers as an option? He, to get waivers, you have to have a card in year one, which is 72, with Boston. 72 Boston, Gagliano, does he exist? Look at Boston. Infielders, Gagliano. We'll look here at their extra players. Gagline exists. Okay, well that's good news. So we have a waiver option, but he's a be a nice little pickup for somebody on the waivered list. Let's make him a keeper for now. And if we find we, there's four guys we like more than him, we'll push him into waivers. Next guy, Dave Kingman, folks. And, oh boy, his average is going to really take a dip over the next decade or so. <laughs> um, so here we are with Dave Kingman. Uh, the prototypical, you could say. Um, Colorado Rocky. So he took his rookie year, or partial, uh, 41 games in 71. Hits 278. And then he hits 288 eight years later. In between, there's a lot of swinging and missing and occasional home runs and so forth. So he's got his biggest home run tally is 37 and 76. He's an all-star. He was in the all-star game in 76 against uh, like Mark Fitterts and so forth. That was in Philadelphia, uh, Bicentennial. Uh, MVP in 75 and 76 for your Mets. But he's also got a good year with the Giants, even though he had 225. So, yeah, he's going to be in the league. He's got to be a keeper. Um, and as far as the, the Mets wanting to go after him, I'm not exactly sure that would be the thing the Mets would want to do in the offseason. They have their own worries right now. Uh, I've already done a Mets elimination. They have too many of their own guys' contracts up that I don't think they're going to import or want to import Dave Kingman yet. So it looks like he might slide to Colorado for a nice chunk of time here. It would be a real ruse for these Rockies to somehow stretch the 71 Kingman into like 75 and then have him go eight years all the way to his 79 performance with the Cubs. That would be a heck of a, a get for the, for the Rockies. And you know what? I think the Rockies need to do that. How else are they gonna compete? I mean, King was no no Hall of Famer, but he's he's on the Hall of Notoriety. He's he's on everybody's list. As well. here's that guy who hit 400 and some career home runs. Where's the number? 442 career home runs for a Colorado Rocky player. That sounds like lifetime achievement right there. And I've, I said before on these, when a guy packs a suitcase and travels around a lot, San Francisco, the Mets. Padres, Angels, Yankees, Cubs, Mets again, Oakland. When a guy travels around like this, expansion teams want to hold on to them and say, hey, stay put here. Build yourself a house. Uh, you know, you can stay in Colorado. We got the no humidor. Uh, we got all your home runs are going to go really far. So, yeah, I think Dave Kingman might be, might be the newest lifetime Rocky. Next player. J.C. Martin. This one's going to be tricky. As he's got the initials here. Oh, for Pete's sakes. Dot here. Dot there. Will that work? Will that appease this thing? No results found. Do I have to put a no space here or something? Back that up? Oh, there we go. Alright, so his final year is 72. 
And it's uh, 240 year with the Cubs. Did the Cubs print that card? We're looking for J.C. Martin. He's and they got Randolph. They got Randy Hundley and Ken Rudolph. Yes. So J.C. Martin's extra player card of 72 exists. So that's a guy we could put on waivers. All right. Next guy, Don Mason. Is a very interesting defensive player who is often a 2E41 at second base or some ver very good range and horrible E rating. So figure that one out. He got to just about everything, but then he threw it at the first baseman's head. You could find a card of Don Mason in 69 with a 2E41 and he was a 2E30 this past year. In 72, he in 73, his career is over, so he's only got 12 at bats. They're not going to print that card, so he gets retired. Don Mason, thank you very much. Enjoy retirement. So that's the five hitters. Now the pitchers. Cumberland. Oh, we really like this card, but it is expired. 68 to 74. Can you do it one more time? Cumberland 71 card. There it is. 9-6, 292, and 185 innings his best year. Give me one more year. Can you do it for me? And the answer is no. No. I'm not even going to look, look for waivers for this guy because he's awful. 864 guy on waivers. Yeah. So we'll retire Cumberland. He, he might actually have a card. I, I, I did uh, for you the Giants or Cardinals. Just to, just to uh, keep my retirement list low. Giants or Cardinals, Cumberland. We'll look at that. that should, they should be alphabetically pretty easy to find here. Oh, Cumberland's got a Cardinal card, 72. So he gets waivers. So, yeah, this is what I was talking about. You want to avoid the retirement lists because if you have too many retirements, then your waiver pool shrinks. So you want to make your waiver pool as big as possible. If the waiver pool gets large, you just look at the worst statistical guys like Cumberland, and then you slide them in retirement. But before we do that, let's put them on waivers, just to make sure we have enough guys. Ron Klimkowski. It's a nice looking card here. For the you know, a couple nice cards. In this era of 69 to 72, didn't have a long career, but he had some nice cards. Believe it or not, I used several. So I used the 70 card and the 71 card, used them both. You look at the performance, it's pretty good. In 72, 31 innings for the Yankees, probably not, doesn't get a card. Let's go take a look. 30 innings for the Yankees, do you get another card? Under the Yankees, he's not there. Extra players, not there there either. So he is on retirement. So that was the last of Klimkowski. Thank you, Ron Klimkowski, for your short little career. It was very effective for a couple teams. And lastly, sadly, Mel Queens, his string of going to the All-Star game as Colorado's lone representative might be coming to an end. He was a um, angel as a lefty. Had some nice years here. 69 had a uh, two, uh, two and a quarter year right here's the big year of 71 this is the card we were using had a 118 whip and a 178 ERA that'll get you into the all-star game but in 72 he has 31 innings for the Angels does he get waivers he does before we put him on waivers we might think of keeping him so this small sample size card exists. And before we pass judgment, I would wait and take a peek. Because I realize the whip is bad, 161. But he throws left-handed. And every left-handed pitcher is looked at in the draft. If you can get a handful of lefties out, um, you're getting into the league. So right now... Boy, it's a real tough thing to. This is not final by any means, but I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna keep this guy until we actually take a look at. Um, until we actually take a look at. Oh, he's right-handed. That's forgot about that. 
My bad. He bats left for his right. Sorry about that. As a right-hander, it changes a little bit. As a right-handed pitcher, a guy with a 435 ERA and a 161 whip is a dime a dozen. So, <laughs> sorry about that, Mel. I got ahead of myself there. Now, he's on waivers. And this is not a good off-season look for the Rockies. They have two guys they like, but six guys to go on waivers of retirement. So they got to get on the phones. They got to find some talent in this. And uh, other teams have too much talent. And they got to find a couple guys. And they're going to have to offer some of their guys in a trade. Um, they could offer. Well, Dick Drago can pitch on three days rest. Somebody might like him. Like Kansas City Royals might like him as they're starting to build a contender. Um, Fitzmaurice has a nice card. Again, Kansas City would like him. Um, Joe LaHood's got a nice card. And, of course, Costco. Yeah, I don't know who they're going to deal, but uh, they need to find two more keepers this offseason. So that's it for the Eliminating the Colorado Rockies. Thanks for checking this out, and we'll see you next time.